I remember when I first moved here, when I was looking for a teaching job, they told me that the school was not going to hire me. Why? Because you're black and they already have a quota of black teachers that they've reached. I am Courtney. I am a black cis woman. I am a black woman and in no way am I a representation of what all black people think. We're not one group, we all feel differently and people have had a lot of different experiences than, than mine right here. This is just, you know, my opinion based on my specific lived experience. My name is Courtney Payne and I am from the United States of America, from California. I grew up in California in the suburbs of the Bay Area, outside San Francisco. I was a middle class family, one sister, two parents, and went to Catholic school, so had a little bit more of a slightly privileged upbringing. So after I graduated from college, I always wanted to live in another country to experience a different perspective, different lifestyle. After deciding that I was going to teach English as a way to live in another country, Thailand came up on my map. It was like Korea, Japan, or Thailand. And I read that Thailand was a relaxed culture, good cost of living, affordable. So I thought this is a good place to start. And I meant to just come for one year and then go to a different country, but I liked it. And uh, one year is really too short to get to know a place. So I stayed and now it's been seven years. I purposely didn't do any research really. I wanted to be surprised. This is a very exciting and interesting and bright place. That was my first thought actually. Like at the airport, I was like, go the colorful taxis. My life in Thailand has been a great experience. I think that there's a very good work-life balance, which I really appreciate. Um, I think that's very important in life to not be too stressed. I think also that there's a great opportunity to save up some money and you can travel easily within Thailand, which I love to do. I also think that Bangkok has a great balance of like a modern lifestyle in terms of what you have access to, whether it's restaurants, um, opportunities and events as well as just like being able to eat street food and kind of have different levels of, um, of your life. I am both an English teacher and a freelance filmmaker. So as an English teacher, that's what I originally came here to do. It's cool because you are always meeting new people. I teach adults, so it's a really good way to learn more about Thailand um, and the culture and people. In the US, we don't even have uniforms in the pub in public schools, but here it's very much like, it's even down to how you wear your hair for girls and boys, I think it's quite strict. Students in Thailand are often a little bit more reserved, a little bit more shy uh, when it comes to asking questions or sharing their opinions in class, which I think a lot of times in the West or in the US, people cannot stop sharing their opinions, even when we don't wanna hear them. <laughs> Society is a lot more reserved than in the US, which I guess I didn't really expect. Um, it just feels a lot more like people are conscious of how they're being perceived by other people. Whereas in the US, there's a lot more of like, I'm an individual, look at me. And I think in Thailand, it's kind of like, don't see me a lot. It's like, don't notice me, I wanna blend in, which is a different, different vibe than what I expected. So when I moved here in 2013, I would say Thailand was a very different place from where it is now. Uh, it changed a lot in 2014, there was a coup and things became very strict after that. I think the economy, especially lately, has gotten worse. So I think people are more stressed and you can feel like an anxiety in the city that I don't remember there being. It used to be more carefree, I would say, and people's vibes and the atmosphere. A lot of people go as African-American, but I just prefer black, simple. To me, being black in America is very much 
like feeling like an outsider in your own home. My parents, my grandparents, and their parents, you're all from the United States, but country doesn't always feel like it was created for you. In fact, sometimes it feels like they're working against you. And I also think it's a beautiful thing to be a black American. We have a very rich culture that it's amazing to see how it has influenced global culture. It's music, art, style. So it's a great thing to be a part of at the same time. As a black person in Asia, you still feel like an outsider, which I guess I'm used to, but uh, it's a different way. You don't really feel like you're expected to understand the culture of the place that you're in. As a black person specifically, I think that you are regarded with some of the same stereotypes that you experience in the United States. American culture is exported through movies through music, through media. So a lot of those same stereotypes and um, ideas about what black people are like have, you know, spread around the globe. I don't use uh, a racial slurs myself. And I think that people that do use them generally, if they're a black person, it's because they're like, taking the word and changing it to a positive, but I don't really think if you're not a black person, you really have that same ability to do that. And I think a lot of times it's out of ignorance. I remember when I first moved here, when I was looking for a teaching job and they asked me to interview at the school that was uh, looking for a teacher. And they told me that the school was not going to hire me, but they wanted me to come anyway to interview. Why? Oh, they're not gonna hire you because you're black and they already have a quota of black teachers that they've reached. So they wanted me to interview against this Russian guy who English is not his first language. He was not as good of a teacher as me, I was gonna say. Uh, he was just very nervous when he was presenting because we practiced with each other. It was a strange experience. I did not go to the interview. Thanks for letting me know, by the way. <laughs> Colorism is a thing when people are treated differently because of the tone of their skin. Oh, if you were lighter skin, that means you weren't working outside in the sun, therefore your family must have more money and that's a good thing, right? Um, but I think that over time, it's probably grown beyond that into the idea that if you have lighter skin, you're somehow better more educated, maybe more intelligent. There is a, a fascination with being lighter skinned, I think, in a lot of places in Asia, including in Thailand, as seen by the many skin whitening products, which I always try to avoid because I'm very content with my brown skin. <laughs> I have never had a racial slur directed at me in Thailand or in Asia. It has definitely happened to me in the US um, multiple times, but never in Thailand. It's never a thing that is pleasant or something that you wanna feel that you have to do. It often depends on like the context of what was said and you know, how I'm feeling that day. It's never something that one likes to do or feels even that they should have to do, but sometimes it's a choice that I make if I feel like I have an opportunity to sort of correct something that is uh, misinformation or rude. The Black Lives Matter movement aims to address a promise of equality that was never actually delivered. Yes, every life matters. This is specifically about black lives. So bear with me on a quick history lesson, very short. The United States had a history of slavery for hundreds of years. You have to create a system that says, well, these people are not human. They're not the same as us. Therefore, that's why we can treat them as property. Black people are not the same as white people. Black people are less than white people and they dehumanize black people to justify that system. Yes, slavery ended, but the racial system that was built to support that and legitimize that system did not end with slavery. Those biases continued, that prejudice continued. We had years of segregation in the United States where if you're a black person, you drink at this water fountain. If you're a white person, you drink at this one. And that was law, that was written into law. Uh, if you're a black person, you 
go to this school. If you're a white person, you go to this school. That ended in 1964. It's no longer law to have bias and prejudice and racism written into law. So when you talk about Black Lives Matter, it's just trying to rectify that promise of equality that was never actually delivered after the end of slavery or after the civil rights movement in the 1960s. And so we still struggle with that bias today and we are trying to address that inequality, which is why we have to say Black Lives Matter, even in 2021. Coconuts TV.